It's Randy Credico from uh, Live on the Fly on WBAI. Max Blumenthal, who also has a show on WBAI Friday at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, Max, uh, could you give us uh, a little breakdown of what you see here on this truck? Well, we've been... I've been in this truck with you for... And it's just a tragedy that you still have to be here with this truck. Look at these kids. Their father is being physically destroyed in prison. They go to see him, what, every week? And they have to be physically searched. They have to have like, their cavities, their mouths searched before their father can even touch them. If you have kids, just imagine that's your existence. And what did their father do? What did he do? Did he destroy 33,000 emails, 17,000 of which were marked classified, that related to uh, pay-for-play arrangements with the State Department and a foundation you run? Did he take documents into his sock drawer? Uh, did he keep documents in his classified documents in his bathroom? Well, that's the first president we've ever seen indicted, and we say we're hearing that it's all about the rule of law. No, all he did was publicize classified documents that outlets like the New York Times, the Washington Post reported on that they feasted on for months and months and months, and he exposed the crimes, the national security state and the inner workings, which is the biggest threat. Because the national security state, it doesn't exist with any democratic consent. There's no transparency. And so when you start exposing what they're actually doing, that's the most damaging thing you can do to them. And so this, the three letter agencies in this town in Washington, whose apparatchiks work in and out of these buildings, we're standing among right now, have had a vengeful, sadistic wrath against Julian Assange for publishing documents, which mainstream out legacy outlets reported on, and he's just been physically destroyed for years since he's been in prison following the psychological torture of being in three rooms in an embassy. What just happened in London is an outrage for anyone who's actually concerned about the rule of law. A judge Jonathan Swift, his name Jonathan Swift, just blocked the appeal of Julian Assange's lawyers to stop his extradition to the United States. And Jonathan Swift has served as a barrister who said his favorite clients were intelligence agencies. So he's basically a tool of the national security state. Then you've got Preeti Patel, who, as Home Secretary, approved the extradition. Who is she? She's a former board member of the Henry Jackson Society, which campaign for Julian Assange's imprisonment. She is a tool of the intelligence services. There is no rule of law when it comes to actually advancing democratic transparency when it comes to the three-letter agencies, including the MI6 and the torture that they've committed and the lies that they've told to us about the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq. And I can imagine the one death blow we could deliver to the Ukraine proxy war, which is sucking tens and tens of billions of dollars out of our pockets to fund not only criminal neo-Nazi militias like the Azov and Idar battalion, as well as the Ukrainian military itself to fight, a, to wage a war that it doesn't seem possible to win right now, but also paying for the salaries of Ukrainian public workers, putting money in the pockets oligarchs will then send it out to foreign bank accounts as, as they did in Afghanistan. The only way to stop it is to expose the national security state to the public, to tell the public where this money is going. And that's what Julian Assange and WikiLeaks would be able to do. We've tried to continue their work at the Gray Zone, publishing classified documents, writing about them, exposing, for example, the British blueprint to blow up the Kerch Bridge connecting Crimea to the Russian Federation exposing British fake leftist pro-Ukraine proxy wars, journalists like Paul Mason as security state collaborators, and what happened to the journalists who published those stories for us? Kate Clarenberg was detained by British counter-terror police and interrogated about the gray zone and about his work. Journalism is being treated as terrorism by the British state because they know that the public cannot learn about what they're doing with the public's money. 
because the public did not consent to any of this. That's why Julian Assange is being tortured. That's why he can't touch his children and will be bundled by cops until they're searched. This humiliation that's happening in broad daylight, that's why it's happening. And so that's why it's so important that people around here be reminded of who he is and the humanity of Julian Assange. Uh, and this, there's no better place to do it than right here, in front of the tavern. I remember, I mean, I can go in the tavern and be treated with respect, but this is like a place where like Bill Crystal will be a private event. Yeah. 